Ever since the thrilling first trailer for The Batman hit the internet, fans across the world have spent countless hours combing through every last shot, hoping to decipher some of the trailer's fascinating riddles. Here's an in-depth look at this teaser, broken down moment by moment. Putting aside the usual studio logos and the inevitable revamped version of a classic rock song, the first teaser for The Batman opens up with the unnerving sound of unraveling duct tape and a few glimpses of a nearly unrecognizable version of the Riddler. Wrapped in a bottle green trench coat and clad in a mask and dark goggles, this is a pretty unsettling and totally unprecedented interpretation of Batman's puzzle-loving enemy. In place of the goofy, slapstick character many have come to associate with Edward Nigma Nashton, the Batman's Riddler appears to be a colder, more calculating kind of serial killer, more akin to the antagonists of Zodiac or Seven than whatever this was. Then there's the Riddler's victim, a dead man in a chair, smothered by duct tape, upon which the killer has spelt out the words, no more lies, in ominous blood-red letters. All signs point to this poor sap being Don Mitchell Jr., Gotham's mayor, whose death kicks off the movie's plot. But just why is this killer targeting an elite politician, and what will be the after-effects of Mitchell's death on the city itself? Well, that's one riddle that has yet to be solved. After offering up that first glimpse of the Riddler, the trailer cuts to Jim Gordon walking down an office hallway, flanked by some very worried-looking FBI agents and Gotham police officers. That's because Batman is on the scene too, and it's clear his relationship with the police is a tenuous one indeed. Matt Reeves has pointed to Mike W. Barr's Batman Year 2 as one of the primary comic book influences for this movie. So, unlike many previous Batman films, the story for The Batman focuses on the early years of his vigilante career. At only a year and a half into his role as Batman, Bruce Wayne has yet to figure out his place in Gotham or how to implement the change he envisions for his city, not to mention whether to establish a positive working relationship with the GCPD. As it stands, Batman is more of an urban legend at this point than a renowned caped crusader, and so his appearance strikes fear into the hearts of everyone including the city's police force. After all, at this point, he's basically just a violent weirdo in a suit, and not everyone is going to be happy to see him. Eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed a number of clues appearing over the course of the next few shots, which depict police investigators examining the crime scene, one of the more notable being the victim's hand shrouded by a brown paper bag for some unknown reason. Framed newspaper clippings also line the office walls, all defaced in a manner similar to the victim's body with the word lies written in what appears to be blood. You can pretty much assume that this is the office of Mayor Mitchell, who, according to the clippings, has recently won an unprecedented third term over an opponent named Bella Real, a political adversary of Mitchell's who, in The Batman, is set to be played by Jamie Lawson. Bella Real is most likely a brand new character to the DC Universe, but some fans have theorized that the name could be a cover for someone more recognizable such as Barbara Gordon, otherwise known as Batgirl. Considering her name really does sound like a red herring, and the fact that Barbara Gordon did run for political office in the comics, there's every chance these fans are right. Or maybe they're not. And Bella Real is just a new character after all. Only time will tell. It's possible to glean a little more information from the other headlines plastered on Mitchell's walls, most notably the mention of a drug bust involving somebody called Maroney. As any Batman fan will tell you, Salvatore Moroni is a longtime Batman villain who, in the comics, is most famous for being the one who throws acid into Harvey Dent's face, turning him into the iconic villain known as Two-Face. This newspaper clipping seems to confirm that Moroni also exists in Reeves' Batman universe and may even make an appearance in The Batman, although nobody has confirmed to play the character just yet. But what role might he have in the story? Well, since Reeves has made it clear this murder mystery will focus on the deep-seated corruption in Gotham City, it's possible that the so-called lies highlighted by the Riddler could bring to light a connection between the former mayor and the city's local mob bosses. The Moroni Mafia are mortal enemies with their rivals, the Falcone family, which is headed by Carmine Falcone, and it could be that the mayor made a deal with Falcone to bust the Moronis and eliminate the gangsters' black market competition. Unlike Moroni, Carmine Falcone is definitely set to appear in The Batman, played by John Turturro, so Gotham's criminal kingpins certainly have some role to play in the movie's plot.
By far, the most important clue left at the Riddler's crime scene is the card planted on Mayor Mitchell's body. Its vibrant green envelope is a nod to the villain's iconic outfit from the comics and provides a reminder of the stark contrast between the character's colorful origins and Reeves' new noir interpretation. On the front of the card, there's a colorful Halloween-themed image, complete with a playful skeleton, bat, and owl. The owl can most likely be interpreted as a pointed reference to the Court of Owls, a secret organized crime group with deep ties to Gotham's elite, including the Wayne family. If the court is connected to the film's plot, Bruce is likely to discover some disturbing truths concerning his own family's past, which could find him questioning his parents' own involvement in Gotham's corruption. The card's holiday theme may also be a reference to another inspiration for Reeves, Batman The Long Halloween, a 13-issue comic book series which centers around a conflict between, you guessed it, Salvatore Moroni and Carmine Falcone. Any of this mean anything to you? As you might expect, considering who's behind this crime, there's a riddle written inside the card left on Mitchell's body. What does a liar do when he's dead? Alongside this cryptic question are a series of mysterious glyphs that, according to a number of internet sleuths, reveal the answer to the card's riddle, he lies still. This simple yet dark pun fits perfectly with the Riddler's M.O. and provides a little insight into the character's own perspective on the world. According to the Riddler, a liar is perfectly capable of deception long after their death, unless, of course, the living do something to rectify it. The simplest explanation behind this riddle is that the dead liar in question is Mayor Mitchell, but who knows? Considering the note is addressed to the Batman, there's a good chance it has implications reaching far back into the Cape Crusader's past, or even Bruce Wayne's. Moving on from the Riddler's crime scene, the trailer shows a press conference, most likely concerning Mitchell's death, being held by the Gotham City Police Department. And the man just off to the left is actually a legacy Batman character, Police Chief Mackenzie Bach, as played by Chernobyl's Con O'Neill. This canon character first came to prominence in the DC comic book series No Man's Land, in which he's depicted as a rogue anti-hero and Dirty Harry type, who goes by the nickname Hardback, earned for his voracious reading appetite. In the No Man's Land storyline, Bach splits with Gotham City Police Department, only to form alliances with criminals like Oswald Cobblepot in an effort to aid a post-apocalyptic Gotham. This sets an interesting context for O'Neill's character, who has never before appeared in a live-action Batman movie. Speaking at the conference is Commissioner Peter Savage, who stands behind a cluster of GCPD officers, a distraught-looking Gordon, and a crying woman dressed in black, most likely Mayor Mitchell's grieving wife. Meanwhile, a shadowy Bruce Wayne watches silently from afar. Is he just keeping tabs on the aftermath of Mitchell's death, or could he be scoping out a potential enemy in Chief Bach and his colleague, Commissioner Savage. After spying on Bach's press conference, Batman departs on a motorcycle and pulls up to a cavernous, damp, and poorly lit space littered with various pieces of computer tech and fabrication equipment. It appears that this is an underground room akin to a proto-Bat cave, with the barely visible words Wayne Terminal etched into the overhead stone archway. This location raises a number of questions. First, just where is it? Is this place some sort of abandoned subway station, once operated by the Waynes? And does its damp appearance link it to the stalled seawall construction mentioned in one of the newspaper clippings on Mayor Mitchell's walls? Bruce would certainly have the power and wealth to halt construction on a project such as Gotham Seawall, which might have interfered with his secret base of operations. Plus, an abandoned subway linking to an underground network beneath the city would certainly be an ideal way to travel throughout Gotham in a stealthy and efficient manner. This might not be quite as conventional a Batcave as we've seen in other Batman movies, but it would definitely be a fascinating new take on an iconic comic location. Arguably the best set piece in the trailer is Mayor Mitchell's funeral, which takes place in what appears to be Gotham City Cathedral. Bruce Wayne is in attendance, along with dozens of other mourners, and inevitably, things go wrong pretty quickly when a black SUV crashes through the church doors, almost killing a young boy standing directly in its path. The car is covered with the letters DOA written in spray paint, which seems to be the Riddler's idea of a sick joke, referencing the medical term dead on arrival. Out of the vehicle steps an unfortunate hostage with a cell phone taped to one hand, an explosive device strapped to his neck, and a yellow envelope addressed to Batman duct taped to his chest. 
Later in the trailer, Batman is seen in the now-evacuated church, attempting to save the doomed man while a bomb-disarming robot stands by, only for the bomb to explode in a massive fireball, throwing Batman backwards in the process. Can't win them all, Bats. Catwoman is a quintessential character in any Batman development story. And sure enough, Selina Kyle will be a pivotal part of this film. Played by Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman is first glimpsed breaking into a safe at the scene of Mayor Mitchell's death. Whether she is working independently or in cahoots with other criminal parties is yet to be revealed. But don't be surprised if Selina prefers to forge her own path rather than throwing in with the others. Later in the trailer, Catwoman has a physical altercation with Batman which longtime fans will doubtless recognize as the equivalent of flirting for these particular frenemies. Reeves has stated that all of the movie's iconic characters will be finding their footing during the Batman, meaning heroes and villains alike will feel a little unrefined, as they're still in the midst of discovering their true natures. So not only will Batman be struggling to make his mark on Gotham City, but Selina Kyle herself may not have formally ironed out her Catwoman identity. Not just yet, at least. The teaser for The Batman then leads to a rainy night outside a building bearing the sign Gotham Recycling, City of Gotham Sanitation East Side Depot. Here, Colin Farrell's Oswald Cobblepot is standing alongside other criminals in an apparent meeting, while Batman watches from afar. As many fans have pointed out, Farrell's prosthetics and makeup make him look practically unrecognizable. So much so, in fact, that Jeffrey Wright reportedly once confused his co-star for a complete stranger. Cobblepot's meeting at the sanitation depot would imply that he has ties to Carmine Falcone, since the docks in that area are likely involved with the mobster's business. As a result, you can make a pretty safe bet that the Penguin will somehow be involved in the corruption that's plaguing Gotham City, which could even make him a target for the Riddler himself. A little later, the trailer cuts back to a shootout at the sanitation depot between two groups of men, one of which is led by an enraged Cobblepot. What exactly goes down there has yet to be seen, but let's be honest, it's probably going to be more than a little shady. In his quest to become Gotham's greatest defender, Bruce Wayne has mastered the art of hand-to-hand -hand combat, making him quite a mess to tangle with in a corner. This is a lesson a group of street thugs learned the hard way during the first teaser for the Batman. Interestingly, these bad guys all have painted faces, which could have any number of implications for the movie's story. The obvious connection is that two of these thugs in particular bear more than a passing resemblance to the Joker and Two-Face, which might suggest they're paying homage to these iconic Gotham villains. Of course, the similarities here might just be little more than Easter eggs. They also look a little like the Royal Flush Gang, a group of playing card-themed bad guys who Batman has faced a handful of times in the comics. Most likely, however, the gang's painted faces are a reference to the Dia de los Muertos, which would tie into the Batman's supposed links to the Long Halloween. Whatever their origins, one of the thugs squares up to Batman, taunts him, and immediately has the ever-living bejesus kicked out of him as a response. As the rest of the gang watches in terror, Batman rises from the ground and delivers that immediately iconic line. I'm vengeance. Reeves' vision for the Batman offers up a unique take on Gotham's heroes and villains in a number of ways. And this sequence is a good example of how. Such raw displays of Batman's rage are rarely seen in live-action adaptations, instead mostly remaining restricted to the comic books or animation. It's honestly not an exaggeration to say that most people have never before seen a Batman quite like this. The tension between Batman and Gotham's police force is a repeated theme in DC Comics. In the canon material, it takes years for Batman to cultivate a sense of trust with Jim Gordon during the latter's ascension to the Commissioner of the Force while the majority of the GCPD remains skeptical at best. Once Batman has his trust, however, Gordon remains a tireless conduit between Gotham's police and the shadowy vigilante who stands outside the law. From the looks of it, this aspect of their relationship between Gordon and Batman will be a key part of the Batman, as the trailer shows Gordon de-escalating a fight between Batman and a group of officers. And this clearly isn't the only time Bruce has run into trouble with the law. A later scene shows Batman escaping up a stairwell with his grappling hook, as gunfire rings around him from police officers below. Batman's conflict with the Gotham City Police Department may have something to do with his unveiling layers of corruption within the police department. And this theme will carry on beyond the movie, too, as it should form the basis for the spin-off prequel series slated to air on HBO Max. The as-yet-unnamed show is inspired by Batman Year One and will expand upon the film's examination of corruption in Gotham City, 
Gordon's relationship with his fellow officers and his blossoming bond with Batman himself. Of course, a Batman movie couldn't be a Batman movie without the Batmobile. And sure enough, this trailer delivers a few early glimpses at Reeves' vision for Batman's legendary car. The Batman's version of the Batmobile features gorgeous body lines reminiscent of classic old-school Detroit muscle cars and is powered by a gloriously insane rear-mounted turbine engine which spits white-hot flames from the rear. The frame has been modified into a race-quality tube chassis wrapped in a custom paper-thin sheet metal body with a vented front hood. This car is as hot and angry as a young Bruce Wayne's unbridled wrath, so it's little wonder that it's been such a hit with fans so far. The latter part of the Batman's teaser trailer poses another question from the Riddler, who asks, If you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? This rhyming riddle again suggests that Batman will have to take a long, hard look at some of the issues that hit close to home, perhaps including his own family's corrupt past. As the trailer winds down, we hear a brief segment from an interaction between Batman and the Riddler. You're a part of this too. How am I part of this? You see. Aside from the obvious plot implications, this moment harkens back to some other influences from the comic books, including Darwin Cook's brilliantly insightful Batman Ego. Here, just like in the best comics and adaptations, Bruce appears to be genuinely haunted. Smeared with black eye makeup, his eyes pierce the screen with all the melancholy anger that fans have come to expect from the world's greatest detective. And that's the end of it. The Batman is still in production, so there's a heck of a lot more of this movie that has yet to be seen. But there's still an awful lot for fans to unpack in what little this teaser has shown. For more answers to this movie's mini riddles, you're just going to have to wait it out until October 1st, 2021. You know what they say, patience is a virtue. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.